Welcome again, you might recall Magic's Music Maker from a previous video that I made. A few videos back I created a sort of track with Cubase using um, samples and loops from Magic's Music Maker 2003. And I created some sort of 80s inspired track. But one of the problems with that was that the tempo of the track didn't really work well. Uh, the length of the clips didn't really align nicely to the grid and there was just a lot of faffing about with it. So it turns out that Magic's Music Maker has a rather peculiar way of working with these clips. Uh, it seems like it actually can time stretch and resample them. So what better way to show that is to well, actually give a demo of the software. And I'm going to demo this one, Magic's Music Maker Generation 6 from 2000, because that was the first version. And well, that's also the one that I have installed here in a uh, virtual Windows 98 system. Uh, it is emulated, so it kind of gives you a fairly decent representation of what it was like uh, when you would run it on period correct hardware. One of the system requirements was that you needed at least a Pentium 200 MHz uh, with 32 MB of RAM and um, 800 by 600 resolution and 16-bit color. Those are the sort of constraints I can easily emulate with PCM. Uh, what I've done is I've created a virtual Windows 98 install, Windows 98 Second Edition, with Magic's Music Maker Generation 6 on it. And it is a Pentium MMX 223 MHz. So let's first take a look at what I created with it. So there you have it, that is a sample of what you can make with Magic's Music Maker Generation 6 from the year 2000. Let's start the software. So there it boots up and I can load my arrangement. It loads a little bit slowly but there it is. And one of the cool things is that you can actually combine audio with video. You can have lots of audio tracks but also more than one video track. Uh, in fact you can overlay them to create all sorts of uh, various effects. Although that's not something I've done in this particular demo. But uh, yeah this is the arrangement. Here's one of the samples. Uh, maybe we can actually preview this one. Oh actually if you click on a event, like an audio event, you get this effects rack. 
So effects uh, are basically applied individually on clips. Let's close out of this one, although I can probably play the object. And I can, well, add some reverb or disable it. That is reverb. I can also do equalization things. I can do something with echo. Let's put this on again. Set reverb to none. There's even a compressor. Let's see if this one has any settings. So I can lower the tempo, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really like that. There's also an audio warper. Distortion effects. So you get these sort of things. Or there's some other filter. Well, and there are some other effects uh, that you actually sometimes have to buy the pro version for. But apparently this is a vocoder, an FFT filter, yeah, and you need to upgrade to the deluxe version for that. Okay, uh, so that's that, and there's a karaoke function. So there's actually a lot of stuff in here. Let's go a bit further in the arrangement. Let's click on this event. So yeah, basically you can just play the uh, thing from start to finish and well you see the video playing there in the video monitor. Although I lost actually the transport controls and they are here. But this is just a sample of what you can do. Uh, I think it's better to show some of the examples that came with the software. Uh, for instance there is a title demo. Yeah, loading takes a bit, because it is emulating a 223 MHz Pentium MMX computer. Here is a demo with titles. And this is just, well, one of the demo things. Welcome to the world of sound. It is a bit uh, cringy, perhaps, and a bit cheesy. You see this girl dancing here with various titles, dancing to some sort of house beat. So that's like demo one, uh, but we also have like a synth demo. Uh, there are actually a few virtual instruments in the software, they are very basic. Uh, I have never really used them in my own arrangements, uh, because at the time I just couldn't figure out how to use them. But this is one of the examples here. This one is called Slowdown. And there is two different synths in here. This one is called Silver. This is basically a step sequencer with various things. You can choose between two different waveforms. There are some settings here and there's also a copper synth, which looks the same but sounds a bit different. But yeah, it's basically just a step sequencer thingy. It already sounds a bit wonky. And there's the drum and bass thing. This is a sort of drum computer. Problem is that these things aren't particularly easy to use. Problem is I can't really like a solo this thing easily. Although I guess I can press this button. And I don't know how this works because, well, I never used uh, those. So that is one of the demos with the built-in synths. There's three different demos of them. Then there is an effects demo. Uh, there is video effects. And that one will, 
Well, this emulated Pentium 2 will really struggle with it. Uh, it'll take a bit to load actually. And you can hear that the uh, sound card is kind of clicking as well. It's emulating a Sound Blaster 16. Yeah, it's uh, a bit crusty, but at the time it was amazing that you could actually do this. Uh, for the year 2000, this was an amazing piece of software. It can still rival GarageBand and iMovie in some ways, because you can have more than one video track for instance. As you can see, there's uh, at least four different video tracks here, with various things, with effects and well, a bit of basic audio. And as you can see that here in the video monitor, uh, the playback is really struggling. Yeah, this emulated computer is not uh, fast enough. Which is a bit uh, of a disappointment perhaps, but let's take a look at audio effects. And this one also has like, well, some basic titles here in the video monitor. It kind of explains new users how the software works, like th these titles here for instance. It is like showing uh, this text. And if you go a bit further, it instructs you how you can use the reverb thing. For instance on this clip they've applied a reverb, so this one is like uh, enabled and yeah you cannot apply these effects on an individual track, you have to apply them on each clip, which is annoying, but yeah, that's just how it worked. And well, this is basically just a text editor where you can edit the title. So in a way, uh, Magic's Music Maker was also sort of basic video editing package. Um, considering how cheap it was, its capabilities uh, for the time, it was actually quite a good value. But I guess we should just... Uh, make a little arrangement of herself. So let's try a new arrangement. The tempo is set to 120 BPM, uh, although my previous uh, demo that I made with it was 140 BPM, but it seems like that it automatically stretches the clips so that they do align on the grid, and that's something that didn't work in Cubase. But the Music Maker apparently is able to do this. Well, let's go to Techno Trends. Let's choose an ARP pattern. Well, I think this first one is nice. Let's drag it on here and you see how it completely like makes this perfectly fit on the grid. And also the tempo here has now changed to 140 BPM. It was 120 before. So another appreciated pattern. Uh, get another one. And also we can just easily make this fade in like so. So let's play it. Maybe we want to add uh, something else. Let's choose a bass pattern that fits with it. Maybe this one is nice. Groove number two. Let's see if they fit. Oh, that's not too bad actually. Okay, that's a, a nice intro and now we can zoom in and out like this. Uh, let's go to the keys section. Oh, this one is uh, quite nice. Dungeon 3 is this one called. So, and I want to perhaps copy these uh, grooves, and instead of using Ctrl and C, you just simply press C. Yeah, that's a bit weird, <laughs> but that's just how it works. So it doesn't actually use the control keys, because if I look here at the menu, it says, uh, well this is the Dutch version, but it says Objecten kopiëren, which means copy objects, it's just C. 
Uh, so that's a bit uh, weird, perhaps. Let's see how this fits. Mm, those two things perhaps don't quite uh, blend together. I don't think that this groove pattern really works here. Um, let's uh, take a look at something from a different library. Oh, and there's no scroll wheel support here. Basic 6, which was the other CD-ROM. Club sounds, bass. Uh, I don't think this one will fit, but let's try it anyway. Let's start the clip from here. Well, yeah, musically that doesn't work. It, it clashes, but... The f really interesting thing is that these clips automatically adjust somehow. They like somehow align to the grid. And yeah, that's probably the reason why it didn't work in Cubase. Because it just time stretches them or it uh, changes the pitch or it does things with it. Uh, sequence. Some of these sounds are, well, a bit old perhaps. Uh, let's see if these... Uh, fit well together and perhaps there are some hip-hop sounds like some mm, drums these are kind of uh, low tempo drums but maybe they work and you see how it automatically adjusted and sometimes it says something here uh, in this um, status bar, what it is doing. As you can see, this thing does not align, but when I drop it there, it's aligned. So, let's give it a try. Oh, now it almost sounds like drum and bass, because it's some sort of hip-hop pattern, but at a very fast tempo. Hey, I kind of like that. That's interesting. So, let's copy this. I know it's a bit weird, perhaps, but I think that could work. So, um, maybe it's a good time to save this arrangement. If I can type properly. I'll just call this one test2. And since this is Windows 98 we can use long file names. Thank you very much. Okay, maybe it's a good idea to add a little bit of video. Why not? Let's see, video. Well, we could add like a dancer. Or something like this. Or virtuals. Like those sort of things. The supernovas, they're always uh, kind of nice. Let's see, there's also a video segment on the other disc. All these dancers in front of a green screen. Well, why not add a bike ride? Let's add a bike ride. A bike ride and... Flieger. Oh, this one is a, f well, a plane. Drive. Um, U. This is interesting. <laughs> this one is called U.AVI. Okay, let's put it here. And that's weird. You see what's happening here? 
that does not quite align. I wonder if I could just stretch this event a little bit. No, I can't, but I can like fade this out. Uh, and maybe we can have like some sort of effect here, perhaps a fade in, and that I do some other effect, like one of those virtuals. Yeah, let's try to start with like spike. Maybe we do this. Well, it kind of works. Okay, now that's uh, very interesting. Maybe we should try adding one of those synths or perhaps add some effects. Uh, there is a whole video effects uh, thing here where we can do all sorts of weird stuff. Let's see, color substitution. Ooh, it's getting a little purpley. Quantize, don't know what that does, those are color controls. Kaleidoscope. Oh, maybe we could like do the kaleidoscope effect on. How do I close this window? Hey, here it says the title of the video spike.avi. Maybe if I select this one and I choose video effects and I want to kaleidoscope it. Ooh, that's uh, interesting. <laughs> that looks funny. Oh, that looks quite funny. Okay, let's commit to this. So that's video effects. Then we have, oh, audio effects. Uh, I do not have an audio effect open. Well, let's click this one and choose, oh, oops, I don't want that. Let's choose audio effects. Oh, it opens the same window. It's the same thing. Okay, let's. Uh, put a ton of reverb on this thing. Huge, huge reverb. But now I think it has probably only applied that on that single clip. Only one way to find out. Yeah, there was certainly reverb on this thing and I wonder if I can copy that effect. Is there a way to copy the effects? Hey, I can actually add tracks. Hmm. Oh, it probably just added a track at the bottom. And you can see eight tracks here, but if I scroll down you actually have a lot of tracks. I think the default is 16, but I added one, so you now have 17 tracks. Yep, I wonder how many tracks you can add. It doesn't really say, maybe there's something in the manual. So let's consult the manual, um, the page for the tracks. Apparently you can have 48 tracks in the standard version and 64 tracks in the deluxe version. The deluxe version was like an upgrade. Uh, it was twice as expensive and well you could upgrade your standard version and it had of course more features. Very typical thing uh, with Magix. I think they still do that with their current products. The, the manual is actually quite comprehensive. It has a lot of pages. It has no less than 144 pages. I mean, back in the day, you actually got comprehensive manuals with software. So, okay, we now know that we can have 48 tracks, which is actually a lot. But maybe we wanna um, add some synth. There are no synth objects. Uh, do you want to go to the synth directory? Yes, please. And there are four different synths we can choose from. We have beatbox, copper synth, drum and bass, and silver. And no, these are not VST plugins, these are like DirectX plugins, if I remember correctly. But let's uh, open Beatbox. Uh, 
Oh, and it seems like it already has like an arrangement that is like preset. And this drum kit is called Alternative. Hmm. Blubber. Crossover. Ooh, nasty. Dance kit. Hmm. Electro kit. Hip hop kit. Percussion. A rock kit. Pop kit. Rock pop. Oh, that one sounds cheap. This sounds like the cheapest uh, acoustic drum kit you can think of. It doesn't sound particularly nice. Techno. Well, I think I'll stick with the dance kit. And this is already like a pre made uh, arrangement that they've got in there. I'd say let's clear it. Uh, is there an easy way to clear this thing? Ah, oh, the interface, it's so, yeah. How would I call it? It's not necessarily scudomorphic, but on the other hand, it slightly is. I think I'll just have to. Ah, oh, dang, you cannot like easily select these things and erase. Th oh, hey, you can do this. It's like a sort of pattern fill. Uh, that may not be a good idea for bass drum, actually. Oh, hey, interesting. Snare. Let's first clear these patterns. So, full hi-hat pattern, play. Oddly enough, it also puts one here. Well, let's just put a high tom somewhere and a crash at the end. I mean, this drum kit kind of sounds like a TR-909, doesn't it? Okay, it's not the world's best arrangement. <laughs> In fact, this arrangement really sucks. But um, yeah, I've, we'll just have to do with it for now. And there are some other options here. So let's save the project and let's play it. Now we get something really weird! Hey, that wasn't too bad. I'm just gonna copy this. The only downside is that, well, you can't really use a scroll wheel. You have to use this bar here and the scrolling is not very smooth. It's quite janky. Um, but I guess it's just a limitation of the time, really. So, um, let's play it. I wonder if I can put a reverb on this. Oh hey, that isn't possible. Um, audio effects... Oh. Um, Oops. Is that even possible? Hey, that is interesting. Uh, it only allows those effects on actual wave loops, but not on those synth objects, which just have MIDI data in them. Hmm, that is a bit <laughs> annoying that you can't do that. But um, yeah, I guess it just comes with some of the limitations. Um, here we have the copper synth. already has something in there. Problem is I cannot really like preview this thing which is annoying. I mean there's not really like a play control here. So I think we kind of showed what we can do with this software. And you can zoom out a lot in fact. I'm really just scratching the surface of what is possible. Um, maybe there's a few more things. There's like a mixer here. So this is like a master section. So 
as well. I can bring this one down. I don't think you can actually automate this. Oh, hey, this is interesting. Here is a thing to select effects. But I can't choose any. <laughs> Here I can only choose one effect, which is called Nagalm, i.e. reverb. So yeah, that's an interesting limitation. So you've got this uh, mixer section here, but there's no effects. <laughs> Absolutely no effects here that I can choose. Yeah, you probably had to have the uh, deluxe version for that. And there's a few more things like internet. Oh, there's a chat module. Oh dear, that is so Y2K. Blah, 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 um, web upload, uh, cancel that. And of course you can just, um, well, export your arrangement. Oh, that's not it. Let's um, save the arrangement. You can even record audio into this program. Um, well, the previous one was just, well, a WAV file. Let's do mp3. Oh, you can't do mp3. <laughs> you need like uh, to pay an extra license fee to upgrade it to an uh, unrestricted mp3 encoder. Oh dear. <laughs> you can only do 20 encodes with the regular version and after 20 uh, mp3 exports you have to upgrade it to get a license to get the actual uh, mp3 thing. Oh dear. Yeah, back in the day, kids these days don't know how easy they have it. Well, at least we can do MPEG audio. Hey, that's interesting. Hmm, very interesting indeed. It just makes an MPEG file, but it's probably gonna be MP1 or MP2, presumably, because it's well MPEG. So it's got to be well, MPEG audio layer, but not audio layer 3. Hmm. And it is, and it, now it is saying afmixen. So it is like, well, rendering the project. And well, this one will not have video in it, because then it will take longer. But yeah, you can just easily export a video. And the one that I made earlier was in a very low resolution, because otherwise it would take ages. Um, yeah, it can actually take a long time if you make the resolution quite high. Uh, the computers that this software ran on were quite primitive. Let's see, will it also open it? Yes, there it goes. It opens with Windows Media Player. Hmm, did I put that in there? Right, well, that's uh, Magic's Music Maker Generation 6 and there's even like a, a help system. Remember Windows Help from back in the day that uh, help documentation was, uh, well, not a website or HTML files, but an actual like help browser thing, which was like a compiled rich text format sort of thing that just came with the software. Uh, yeah, I have the Dutch version here. Oh, this goes slowly. Look at how janky and slowly <laughs> this goes. I mean, yeah, it was quite, well, yeah. It's just reflective of the time, really. Oh, let's take a look at upgrades. Encoder upgrade. If you wanted the Q-Design MP3 encoder, yeah, you could actually purchase that. So, and you could upgrade to Magic's Music Maker Generation 6 Deluxe Edition. So it had more features. What extra features did it have? Let's see. One of the improvements was that you now had 64 tracks instead of 48. 8 virtual instruments instead of just uh, well, 6. So there was also a sampler and an ambient synth. You could remix music CDs. Apparently there was an FFT filter and there were more like clips. Just more assets on CD, Spectrum Analyzer, Direct Capturing of Video, an Audio Video Effect Editor. 
loop creation, so a music editor. So basically uh, an editor where you could make your own loops in the way that the software has its loops. It would have support for real audio and MS audio, Windows Media Formats, real video, QuickTime, who remembers real video and real player? And the price was, well the regular version was 99.95 guilders and the deluxe version was twice as expensive, 200 guilders. So yeah, that would be, well, I would have to do a euro conversion adjusted for inflation there. But um, yeah, special upgrade offer. And if you had the demo, you could upgrade it for a cheaper price. Hmm, that's interesting. So yeah, that was it. So there you have it. That was a look at Magic's Music Maker Generation 6 from 2000 on an emulated Windows 98 machine. Kind of showing you how you would use the software with the loops. Uh, instead of showing it in Cubase where it just didn't really work. As you can see the software was quite capable uh, and quite good value uh, for what you got back in the day. Considering that you nowadays have GarageBand and uh, iMovie on an iPad. I still find these things somewhat limited in certain aspects. Although yeah, that software probably runs smoother. But when it comes to like uh, having multiple video layers. Well you can't do that with iMovie as far as I'm aware. You can only have perhaps two layers of video and that's it. Or one layer with titles. And well yeah when it comes to audio. GarageBand is probably better than Magic's Music Maker from the year 2000. But still uh, considering... The price of this software, what it cost back in the day and what you could do with it, uh, I think it was quite capable and quite good value. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Bye bye.